Welcome. Welcome to the program. Uh, glad to be back from vacation. Not glad to be looking at the news again. Mm. Uh, I spent uh, the last week not looking at the news really at all. Um, paying attention to my children. Basically, I think, doing what most Americans now are doing. I, um, I did a charity fundraiser last week, and I said, you know, uh, I don't get the opportunity to not look at the news. I have to. That's my job. Your job is to stay sane. My job is to look at the insanity every day. And so it doesn't give you a, uh, it doesn't give you a cheery disposition when you're doing that. <laughs> Um, no, and it and you lose perspective on sometimes what's really important. I had one of the most clarifying vacations I have uh, I've ever had, and I know exactly where we are to go. No, no, I know exactly where I'm supposed to go. Um, been coming for about five years, and uh, I just begged, begged. I don't want to do any of that. What do you say we just do fun stuff? No, no, he's not interested in that. However, let's talk about the border in different terms. These people who are turning the buses away in uh, California, I don't know anything about them. I don't like the fact that people are now starting to uh, 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 form militias. I think that's a really colossally bad idea. But I understand your frustration. The people who are turning the buses away, I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea. However, I do think that people need to look at what they're doing and how they're doing it. See, none of us are PR people. None of us are, um, we're, we're just get the job done. And, and we don't really understand how the media how powerful the media is, and how you're going to be painted. And I, I urge the people in any town, what you're seeing right now happening is what's called the Bubba effect. We said this would happen. And I didn't know what the topic would be, and I think you're seeing the beginning of it now. You're seeing people who justifiably are standing up who justifiably are saying, look, I'm paying for taxes. I'm paying for you to do certain things. And one of those things that you promised you would do, in fact, you lectured me like I was a four-year-old on, you know, these people say the border's not secure. It's more secure than ever. Is it? Is it? If fences don't work, how come there's a fence around the White House? How come there are gates? How come there's security? How come there's front doors on the White House? Because there's something valuable inside. And so we ask that you come through a security gate. We ask that you do that. If gates and fences don't work, then I demand that the gates around our airports be taken down. Our fences be taken down. Because they're apparently not worth anything. They don't do anything anyway. If somebody wants to come in, they're going to come in anyway. Well, then why do we have the gates and the fences around the airports? I demand to know if gates and security don't work, then why do I have to go through a metal detector any time I go in through a federal building? How come I have to present ID whenever I'm buying alcohol? These things do work, and everybody in the world knows it. And you are paying for homeland security. You're paying for a border fence. You're paying for the border guards. You are paying for the detention centers. You are paying a personal cost In your hospitals, you're paying a personal cost. The hospital, when the hospital is overrun by illegal aliens who have no insurance and are coming here to have their babies and everything else, what happens is you pay a real cost. If you are sick, you're getting diminished care because we are having to pay for people who are not paying into the system at all. You are paying a real cost with your children. 
Because when your children, there's a town in North Carolina now that I just read the headline. There's a town in North Carolina that the kids now speak Spanish. There's more Spanish-speaking kids than there are English-speaking kids. Well, that's because the federal government has been bussing people in. Well, I got news for you. That fundamentally changes the culture of my town. It now has to change. I have to change the teachers. I have to change the way they teach. If I like my school, they have fundamentally changed it because now it will not work the way it worked when everybody was speaking English. That is not a judgment on the people who don't speak English. It's not a judgment on anything. It is an excoriation of the United States government failing to do its most basic duty. And so people are saying to themselves, well, what do I do? What do I do? They don't hate the people who are coming from Guatemala. How can you possibly hate somebody? How can you possibly hate somebody that is coming from a war-torn country? We're never, we're, we are the give us your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Well, that's who we are. We've always been that people. We have always been bring the, bring the boat people. Do you remember, what was it, the Vietnamese boat people that came to our shores on boats from Vietnam, they are now one of the strongest communities in Houston, Texas. They are a remarkable people. Good. We want them here. They have made Houston, Texas stronger. That is really good. These people struggled to get here. But do you know why? Do you know why the um, uh, people of, oh shoot, was it Honduras? Why they're coming here? Do you know why that country's ripped apart? Because there was a coup that our president refused to denounce. There was a coup that happened last year. The entire world said it was a coup, but we would not say it was a coup. We stood with the people that took over that country. Then what happened? Then were they, they restored democratic elections. I think it was 43 countries went to observe these elections. 42 of them said this was totally criminal. This was not a fair election. The one country that said, no, that looked good to us. The United States of America. We're the only country that said, no, it looks good. Everybody else in the world said that was a complete highway robbery of elections. Was Jimmy Carter the representative we sent out? Uh, Probably was. Probably Probably was. So, what's happened since? Well, the president has said, well, now that they've restored democratic elections, we're the only ones that said they were fair. Now that they've restored democratic elections, things are getting better. Well, no, they're not getting better. 14 members of the press have been killed. 30, 35 or 37 of the um, uh, opposition leaders have been killed or mysteriously disappeared since the election. Why do you think these parents are sending their kids here? And once again, it is because the United States is meddling in other people's business. We are meddling in their business. We're picking and choosing again. We've done this to all of South America. Why do you think they're in such poverty? Because we have chosen their leaders for them for far too long. Our arrogance is beyond recognition. And so you're sitting in a town in California or Texas or any place else, and you're thinking to yourself, what do I do? You know, they're not coming into my town. I don't, I don't hate these people. I, I understand, but they have to understand the United States government is crippling my town. It is their children versus my children. And I want to take care of everybody's children. I will take care of these children. But they are not to stay here. They are going to go back home. What do you, what do you think is happening on the border? Well, we're all paying attention to all of this. What do you think? Nobody has even said this. I have not heard this anywhere. Now, granted, I haven't read the news in in the last week. But is anybody talking, besides the blaze, is anybody talking about the possibility of what is being smuggled and whom is being are being smuggled into our country while we're paying attention to the kids? Watch the other hand. What else is happening on the border? 
And they're talking about comprehensive immigration reform. There's no such thing as comprehensive anything in this argument. Because nobody is even willing to address the problem. And the problem is, the President of the United States, God bless him, the President of the United States is coming to Texas, and he won't, he will not go to the border. He will not meet with the governor of this state. He's, excuse me, this is, this is worse than George Bush's Katrina. George Bush actually was trying to send help. He got into a plane and flew over the devastation and looked at it from the air. At least the man looked at it. At least the man was on the phone with the local authorities and with the governor every single day, sometimes many times a day. He also didn't cause Katrina. Uh, Yeah. You can say that Obama... If he didn't cause it, he contributed mightily to. Well, this he blew situation. up the he blew up the um, the, levies. Uh, the levies. George Bush did. Wow. So, here here is here is a situation where people are seeing this, and there is it has nothing to do with the kids. It has nothing to do with anything other than our government becoming lawless, and these poor people. Look at what we're trapping them into. We are trapping them into another country that is becoming lawless. They are trying to escape lawlessness. I have no doubt that if I were in Honduras, if I were in El Salvador, and I saw the opportunity to put my kids into the hands of the United States of America and give them a better chance, do you know that my my, uh, my, um, great uncle, Uncle Leo, this is on my wife's side, He's an Italian. When the war broke out, they didn't know how it was all going to end. And so the family took all of their money. And I'm not just his immediate family. The entire family took all of their money and they sent Leo to the United States. Leo, you go. Because we don't know what's going to happen to us. The family has to go on. Families have done that. As many of our own families have done that. That's what's happening on the border. These countries are in jeopardy and in peril, and there is chaos, and there is evil, and our government has supported it. And now they're coming here. So we have no malice toward any of these people, except those who wish us ill. I understand why a parent would do that. I thank God cannot relate to it, because my family has never been in that much jeopardy, but I understand What I don't understand is the United States government not doing its job. And that's why people are standing up at the border. That's why people are standing up in their hometowns and stopping these buses. But I want to talk to you about the right way to do it and the wrong way to do it. I understand why you want to do it. You're now being asked today for an additional $2 billion. For what? For what? So you can feed people? So you can house people? So you can you can ship them to our cities and you can cripple our cities? No, no. There is a better way. There is a better solution. But it requires people on all sides to come together and say, okay, let's just talk about the truth here. We have to take care of people. But the last thing I want to do is spend more money through the federal government, give them a dollar so they can take 30 cents on that dollar and spend it the way they want to spend. Let's take care of this crisis ourselves while holding the feet to the fire. Not another dime. What have you done? You've lied to us every step of the way. No. We will take care of the humanitarian crisis while we demand that you take care of the border crisis. It's corruption. And we are feeding it by sending them money every, every month, every two weeks in our check. We're feeding their corruption. Enough is enough.